Praise God. Let the people of God say Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program where we exalt, where we encourage and challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here we also call sinners to repentance through the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today, this topic really deals with people who are yet to decide for Jesus Christ. So, if you're already a believer, a genuine, true follower of Jesus, you want to listen to this. It's a very good material uh, for soul winning. And you want to send it to as many people in your family, in your workplace, that you know they need to hear this. Because here, by the grace of God, we are not politically correct. So we're going to hear some truth today, okay? Uh, so the topic is lies from the pit of hell. Lies from the pit of hell. And that's another name for Satan, okay? And the case study is going to be the undecided under Herb's reign. The undecided under Herb's reign. But before we go into the story and all that, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Sweet Jesus, thank you for bringing us here again. Sweet blessed Holy Spirit, I release myself to you. My tongue, my mind, my, my heart, my eyes, everything, oh Lord, I release unto you. Holy Spirit, use me, oh Lord, for the glory of Jesus. Father, let this word reach the heart of those who are still tossing the idea of salvation. Uh, and, and those who are here to decide, Father, reach them with this word, O Lord. And let Jesus alone be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, king Heab, he was the seventh king uh, in Israel. After Israel uh, and Judah separated uh, in the time of uh, uh, Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Now, he became the seventh king, and history tells us that he reigned between 919 uh, BC to 896 BC. And it was a terrible time, a dark time on the history page of uh, the northern kingdom, uh, Israel. Uh, during this time, Heab uh, was given to idol worship. Now, if you don't know anything about Heab at all, listen to this. He, he was the husband of Jezebel. That tells you all you need to know. And his daughter was Ataliah. That tells you all you need to know too, you see. So people under the time of Heab, they saw so many wickedness. And because of his idol worship, uh, Elijah, the prophet, said there would be no rain according to the word of the Lord. And true, there was no rain. Fast forward to three uh, and a half years later, God told uh, Elijah to go and show himself to Heab. And when Heab saw him, Heab said, Oh, look at you, troublemaker of Israel. And uh, Elijah said, I'm not the troublemaker. He said, meet me on Mount Carmel with all your uh, bear prophets, your, your idol worshiper prophets. And they went to Mount Carmel and there was this contest because Elijah said, we need to know if God is God or if your idols, Baal, if it's God. People of Israel need to know. And Elijah asked the people, how long will you live between two opinions if God is God, then serve him. If Baal is God, then serve Baal, you see. But the Bible says nobody said anything. And at the end of the story, if you go, uh, I, I would like for you to read it. First Kings chapter 18. Uh, we don't have the time to, to go into all that here. Uh, the, the full story is there. 
You see, at the end of the day, the God of Israel showed himself that he is the true God. Amen. And all the uh, prophets of Baal were destroyed. So our foundation test is Isaiah 35 verse 8, the book of Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. And I'm going to be reading from all kinds of translation today. I'm not sticking to my King James because I want this message to be as simple as possible and for people to be able to understand it. All right. So let's read that. A highway shall be there. It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not travel on it. It is reserved. Please underscore that. It is reserved for those authorized. Underscore that again. Authorized to use it. Not even fools will get lost. Walking on it. That is even if somebody is not perfect, but so long they are walking on that way of holiness, they won't get lost. So, what are the lies that the devil tells people that is making people to go to hell every day, to the lake of fire in their millions? And it's as if nothing is happening. Let's talk about those lies. The first lie says, good works work. Good works work. In the days of Elijah, many people in Israel were nice, but their problem was their non-commitment to the God of Israel. In today's world, many have been deceived to believe they are all right with God because they do good to others. To be exclusively committed to Jesus is not needed in their view. However, watch this. Come on close. Come on. The problem is God is not looking for good people to come to heaven. Oh no. Say what? Uh-huh. Just stay with me. God only wants pure people. Another word for pure is perfect. Is that possible? Stay with me. We are just started, okay? Since no amount of good works can make anyone perfect, to believe in good works then is to believe in a satanic lie. It is good to help our neighbors. In this ministry, I'm telling you, there are, we only have a few of us who are staffed. Uh, you know, like we are, we are real um, uh, uh, members that come here to work. The rest, they are volunteers. I mean, we cannot do without them. We thank God for volunteers. They have the heart to help others. So I'm not here to diss volunteering or people who are. No, it is good to help our neighbors. Jesus both commands and comment it, you see. However, a committed relationship to Jesus is the only way God can accept anyone. And it is the only way our good works will be acceptable unto God. If we do good to others and we are not committed exclusively to Jesus, commit our lives to him, it's a waste of time, all the good works. Because God is not going to receive that, you see. Let's go to Isaiah 64, verse 6. Isaiah 64, 6. It says, we are all like one who is unclean. Please listen to this. I deliberately chose this very version. Because we need to see the reality of a life without Jesus. All our so-called righteous acts are like a ready menstrual rag in your sight. That's kind of gross, right? Yeah, that's because to live a life without Jesus is pretty gross to God. We all wither like a leaf 
and sins carry us away like the wind, you see. Nobody has the power, no one, nobody has the power to withstand sin until you give your life to Jesus, you see. Charity on earth cannot bring purity from heaven. But Christ in heart, hallelujah, we bring purity from heaven. Say that slowly, Joseph and Zion. People need to hear this again, all right? Charity on earth cannot bring purity from heaven. But Christ in heart, we bring purity from heaven. Moving on. Good God loves. Not only Satan lies to people to say good works work, the devil also say good God loves. Oh, you see, evil ravaged Israel unabatedly during Ahab's reign. So much it was as if there was no God of justice. Satan still peddles the same lie, you see. Some people see God as so loving that we never send anyone to hell. <laughs> However, the Bible says righteousness in the book of Psalms and justice are the foundations of God's throne. Are you telling me God will not ask for all the rapes, the murders, the child molestations? Are you kidding me? And the Bible also says, if we join hands together, the wicked will not go unpunished. That's in the book of Proverbs, you see. God is very clear about his intentions to judge the world for every wrongdoing. If child rape makes you angry, then imagine God. Huh? Unless people repent, God is going to judge the world for every wrongdoing. God is going to ask. He is going to ask. This is called the judgment day of the Lord. Anyone who yields to the love of God and receive Jesus will not, underscore that, will not suffer penalties for any wrongdoing anymore. I once shared the story of a brother who many years ago uh, when he was still younger, so we're talking over, over about three decades ago, really, uh, that the devil used him to molest a child, you see. Uh, and, and he was in jail for a long, long time, you see. He came out, now he's a child of God, praise God, and growing in the Lord. And even though he's suffering the consequences, because he's been uh, registered as a a sex offender for life, but you know what? He has heaven to look forward to, and he has nothing to worry about eternally. Why? Because God wiped that sin off with the blood of Jesus. The very day that brother received Jesus, you see, so he will not have to pay the penalty anymore because he has come, he has come into Jesus, and Jesus already paid for that on the cross you see so if you are also watching and you are saying you have no idea what i've done if you give your life to jesus you won't have to pay the penalty anymore oh no because that will be put into jesus's account and he already paid for all that not only the sins you have committed even the ones you still Commit, even by accident or mistake, as a child of God, he has, he has paid for everything, you see. Let's go to the book of Psalms. For those of you who only believe in preachers that, preaching, that, uh, preachers that preach only love. Oh, I only like to listen to uh, AAYZ because he only preaches uh, about love. Listen, this is for you, okay? The book of Psalm, chapter 50, verse 21 to 22, Psalm 50, 21 to 22. Listen now, you that like your ears to be tickled. These things you have done, and I kept silence. This is the God of heaven and earth speaking to you right now. You thought I was just like you, huh? But now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. 
Repent, all of you who forget me, or I will tear you apart. That's God speaking, not me. That's Jesus. Uh-huh. The sweet little Jesus is the one speaking now. I will tear you apart, and no one will help you. Listen. If all you want to hear is the loving Jesus, you have not read your Bible to the book of Revelation. Because there is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's coming back as the lion to tear apart those who have refused to repent. Jesus is, is the God of love, but he's also the God of justice. Because he needs to give justice to all the people who have been wronged. Okay? So... If the devil has hooked you to the lie that good God loves and he doesn't judge, uh -uh, that's a lie, okay? So you want to reassess that today, amen? To accept God's only son is to experience God's endless love. Let's say that again. You want to experience endless love of God, that's quite possible. Oh yeah, it's possible. To accept God's only son is to experience God's endless love. Moving on. This is the third lie that the devil sells. No need for forgiveness. When Hair saw Elijah, it was not remorseful. Why? Nor did he ask for forgiveness. Why? Because he did not see idol worship as evil. You see, he's just doing his own thing. Since Heab, as at that time in history, had not killed anyone, you see. What is your own idol? Huh? Come on, look at me. What is your own idol? Your job? Your job is more important to you than Jesus? Or sports? I'll, I'll think about Jesus, but right now I've got my sports to face. Is that your idol? Your house? Huh? When I finish paying my mortgage, then I will consider Jesus. Listen up. You are just acting like, hey, say what? That's the truth. You see, I told you, we are not going to be politically correct because we are never politically correct in this ministry. Praise God. You see, hey, was just doing his own idol worship. He was not bothering anybody. So he thought, what did I do? I don't need any forgiveness, you see. Likewise, Satan has deceived many to believe that they don't need forgiveness because they have not done any evil to anyone. I'm just loving my job. I just love my car. I just love my house. I, I didn't do anything to anyone. I've not killed anybody. I don't smoke. I don't drink. People tell me all these jargons all the time. The Bible says, listen up. We are all sinners through Adam. When Adam disobeyed in the Garden of Eden, we were all still in his body as X and Y chromosomes. You see? And because we all carry Adam's crooked DNA, you see, we were all crooked before uh, somebody was tagged crooked uh, last year, you see. Because we all carried Adam's crooked DNA, this has made sin inherent in us, thus making us imperfect before a perfect God. We are also sinners through the personal sins we commit via our thoughts, our speech, and our actions, you see. So, do you want to argue with that? That you were born perfect? Huh? If you, if you say, okay, you want to argue that, you want to tell me that since you've been living, you have not sinned. I don't think so. You are more intelligent than that. So I don't think you will argue that. 
So, the Bible says, there is no one who does not sin. Do you now agree with that? Since you agree that you have not been perfect since you were born. Charles Spurgeon, one of my favorite mentors, said, and I quote, as the salt flavors every drop in the Atlantic, so does sin affect every atom of our nature. It is so sadly there, so abundantly there, that if you cannot detect it, you are deceived. End of quote. I don't think I can even say it better than that. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 23. We stop at 24. The epistle to the Romans, chapter 2, 23 and following. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not falling short. No, some people say it like that. Fall short. You see, from here to 2,000 years to come, if the Lord tires, if you are doing good and you have not done anything wrong, the Bible says you are still short of God's glory. It's still not going to be perfect, you see. Yet, God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. That is, if you give your life to Jesus, he did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. Hallelujah. That is, if you give your life to Jesus, to still believe in, is to need forgiving. To still be living is to need forgiving. Moving on. The other lie that the devil tells people is no one has assurance. Really? <laughs> Let's talk about that. In the time of Elijah, the godly people were suffering from the drought that was going on just like the wicked. Solomon, in his days, witness the savages of sorrow and death on humanity and he wrote in ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 2 ecclesiastes 9 2 he said this is solomon now it is the same for all since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked to the good and the evil to the clean and the unclean to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice? As the good one is, so is the sinner. And he who swears as he who shuns an oath, you see. Solomon was like, what's the point? Everybody is dying. The same bad stuff happening to everybody. You see, the Bible is not only the direct dictation of the word of God, of the word of God, it's also a compilation of biographies or autobiographies of people who had lived their lives literally, you know, in, in ancient times and how God intervened in their lives. So we are able to learn from their natural lives, you see. So this was one of Solomon's experiences, you see. Now, Likewise, Satan has deceived many to believe that, that no one can be sure of going to heaven. Now, Solomon wasn't saying that, don't get me wrong. He was just grieved about how people uh, die and evil stuff happens to everybody, okay? But the devil has now taken the same thing and distorted it. You see, the devil is very good at that. And now he's telling people, oh, everybody goes to the same place. Nobody goes to heaven. There's no heaven. There's no hell. That's a lie. However, when Jesus came, he set the record straight. This, now we are going to use the word of Jesus himself. John chapter 14, verse 2 to 3. And I'm using the New Living Translation for easy comprehension. The gospel according to St. John. Chapter 14, verse 2, we stop at 3. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If you are a King James student like myself, yours will read, in my father's house there are many mansions. If this were not so, would I have told you 
that I'm going to prepare a place for you? Jesus is asking now. When everything is ready, this is Jesus still speaking, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Now that is the words of Jesus in red in the Bible, not from some um, uh, uh, historical figures in ancient times. No. Jesus said, when I finish preparing the place in heaven, I'm coming to get you. So, who are you going to believe? Jesus or Satan? Huh? Jesus knows those who will go to heaven because they have his spirit in them. And we, who we go to heaven, we know without a doubt that we are going. How do we know? Because the Holy Spirit, the sweet blessed Holy Spirit, lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit is the connector between us, general believers, and heaven, you see. To not have the Holy Spirit in your heart is to not be qualified to enter heaven. There's no other way you can put it. No other way. But that can change right here, right now. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 9, a very popular verse in the Bible. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, and again, I'm using the New Living Translation. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. If you are in Jesus Christ, you are controlled by the spirit. If you have the spirit of God living in you and remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. That's very plain, huh? If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you can be a pastor. You can be a bishop. The Bible says, you don't belong to Jesus. But that can change. To have the Holy Spirit is to have his only secret. Back of Josephine. Say that again. It's so beautiful. To have the Holy Spirit is to have his only secret. Amen. So what are the lies from the pit of hell that we have talked about so far. Number one, Satan will come and say, good works work. That by doing good, you are fine with God. Satan will say, good God loves. That is, God is too good to let anyone go to hell. Satan says, no need for forgiveness. There's no reason to ask for forgiveness because you have not done anything bad to anyone. Satan says, no one has assurance. That is, nobody can really say for certainty if anybody will go to heaven or not. Now, if you think you're a Christian, but you are not sure you are heaven bound, it's time to repent. Because the Bible says you don't belong to Christ if you don't have his Holy Spirit. So if you think you're a Christian because you have been baptized, your name is on the church roll, but you are not confident that the Holy Spirit is in you, uh-uh, you are not there yet. So repent because there's still room. Turn your life over to Jesus completely, totally. Time is ticking. Time is ticking. Now, if you're a genuine believer, with the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Please do not keep to yourself. Please, I'm begging you. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Do not keep your mouth shut, please, if you're a genuine believer. Destruction is ahead of all pagans and unbelievers. I'm telling you, if you have unbelievers in your family, start praying for them. If you have unbelievers in your workplace, start talking to them about Jesus. Because Destruction is looming on their heads. Now, if you have never believed in Jesus, having listened to a biblically correct 
politically incorrect message like you just did, your life is forever changed, whether you like it or not. Why? Because now you don't have any more excuse to give to God. I just became your worst enemy. Seriously. Because you cannot deny that you didn't hear this message. And you cannot destroy this message. This is the evidence that God will pull out if you don't change. But I pray it doesn't come to that for you. So you can't deny nor destroy the evidence because this evidence is eternal. The only wise and intelligent thing for you to do, seriously, is to surrender to Jesus. Jesus is an intelligent choice. Only intelligent people surrender their lives to Jesus. Seriously. It is beneficial for you now and eternally rewarding for you to surrender to Jesus. You have nothing to lose. Nothing. All you are going to lose is hell fire. The lake of fire. Now if you are ready to give your life to Jesus, a link is coming up very shortly. I will say a quick prayer so I won't hold you. So follow that link and we have broken the uh, message of salvation into little bits for you with video uh, um, a Bible, a visual Bible to help you. And as you do that, I pray that the Lord God himself will minister to your heart in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Oh Lord, I delivered what you gave me. My hands are clean from the blood of every unbeliever undecided who are here to decide for you. My hands are clean of their blood. And so, Lord, I ask that you use this word to break down every stony heart, every satanic wall, break it down in their heart. And for those who are going to want to know Jesus' faith, Father, open their eyes and let them understand what they are about to do. And for us believers, we ask that you give us the grace to continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ undiluted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I will see you next week. Only Jesus has not split the sky open.